Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers and this is Annie 255 and this is the Box Fire Simulation Part 4. Alright, so go ahead and play the uh, simulation real quick. And we've got everything looking pretty good. We've got the particles coming out with streak and then we've got the secondary particles um, breaking apart when it hits the box and splashing all over the place on the floor. So everything's looking pretty good. Now we just need to add the fire. All right, so before, earlier, I made a video um, for 2020, and it worked just fine. I don't know what happened, but there's a glitch, um, a definite bug in Maya 2022 um, that won't allow us to select the object and go to effects and use the fire effects. So that's what I wanted to use for this particular um, project this assignment but it wouldn't let us so unfortunately it just keeps giving me errors um, so what I need to do now is uh, I'm reworking the video um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add paint effects fire uh, which is pretty interesting and I actually think it looks more realistic than the fire effects anyway so I think this might work out for um, what we want to do anyway, work out a little bit better and make it look a little more realistic when we render it. So with that said, we won't have to change anything in here. Um, we're going to paint them one by one though and that might take some time. So I will cut away from the video. I'm going to show you how to do one and then I want you to do the rest of them and then we'll cut back to having them all finished and then that way I don't waste your time. Um, and then I'll show you how to turn the fire off. That was a little challenging at first, but I figured out how to do that. So, again, I had to do this all in one day because I had a couple students say, "Hey, listen, your videos, um, the fire effects aren't are not working." So I had to go look online and find out. And even on the forum, they uh, there's no information on why my twenty. 22 doesn't work with fire effects. So anyway, it's not here nor there anymore. Um, so what we're going to do is add fire with paint effects. All right, so what I'm going to show you to do, I've already got paint effects uh, set up. So you have to go into this little gear under modeling. So you can see here it's this menu of items to modify the shelf. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go to load shelf. We want to load something in this shelf. Okay. And then in here you're going to see, you click on paint effects, so shelf underscore paint effects dot mouse. So click on that. I've already done it. I can't do it again. So click on that. It should show up right here. And then click open. Okay, so when you do that, it should come up. And if you don't see it, it should be right up on the shelf. If you don't see the shelf, um, you can go in here and click on shelf tabs. That will turn that off and on. So if you ever see that these are missing, they can just go in here into the little gear and click on shelf tabs. Make sure that is on. Okay. All right. With that said, click on the shelf tab itself, paint effects. And what we want to do is we want to select the object we want to catch on fire. We want to paint on. So paint effects is all about painting an effect. I know it sounds crazy, but it's pretty. It's pretty powerful and so when you click on something and you make it paintable then it gives you a brush and I think Maya is the only software program 3D software program that allows you to do this which is pretty amazing and it's very powerful so we're gonna go ahead and use that today um, a little sooner than I wanted to we will go over paint effects and you're you are gonna do a scene with paint effects but right now we're just gonna use the fire effects to get through this part of it um, so select it and click on paint, make paintable. Okay, that's that guy right here, the brush and the little three balls. And that's selected. Don't worry about if you get a uh, yellow error. Um, just go ahead and click off and then click back on the box. And then click on this uh, icon. It looks like a jar with a butterfly coming out. Click on that. And if everything's closed, then I want you to... Um, open up examples and then you'll see something like this and click on paint effects and you're gonna click on fire okay so let's put put that over here All right. 
So we've got all these choices here. I want you to click on the one that says large flames dot, uh, m dot mel. Just highlight it. And you're going to see that once you highlight it, you notice that the object that we made make paintable uh, doesn't do it for anything but the object that's selected and that we made we made it paintable so it will paint on there so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do a control one that isolates my box and I'm gonna zoom in now before I do that um, I probably want to add a a bookmark okay so let me get back where I was so let's say you have your camera set up exactly how you want it and what I can do is once if I like that camera and I want to move in and out and kind of go around the box and want to come back to the camera I can do a bookmark so I'm going to go to view bookmarks and go into edit bookmarks and then I'm going to click on new bookmark and I'm just going to name it whatever I want so let's say I do fire uh, cam 02 and I'm going to click apply okay and let me go ahead and hit enter there we go hit enter and then I'm gonna hit apply and then I'm gonna close it okay so if I zoom out I can go to view bookmarks and you can see I've got fire cam 1 and 2 uh, the one I just created I'll click on that and it goes right back to where we were so that's really powerful all right, so let me get back here um, and make sure that the paint effects is selected. I'm going to do Control, Control One, that isolates that object. I'm going to hit the F key, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint. Now, I want to paint as much as I can on this box. So, I'm going to do uh, the top. I'm going to kind of start this way and kind of go around. It's kind of a snake type drawing. I'm just kind of painting on there. I'm going to go over here. I'm, do, I'm doing one continuous stroke back and forth like that. Okay. All right. So there's my box. And I'm going to move around here and do the same thing. You can see my. I'm just kind of going like doing an S shape all the way down the box and then around the back okay like that okay so something looks like that I'm gonna hit the F key or excuse me the Q key and click off and you can see there's our box on fire now what's really cool about paint effects um, it, it actually comes with um, the stroke and uh, particles um, so the stroke these are the flames okay which is really cool. You can see that why I don't want to do each flame one at a time. I want to do, I want to paint them on with one continuous, and it take, may take some time for you to get used to that. And if you want to add more, you can. It's up to you, but I'll show you what it looks like. And if I play the animation, let's do Control One again, get everything back again, and let's go ahead and get the view uh, bookmarks. Go ahead and use that already. There we go. And then I'll play the animation, and you can see that the there's the flames, and the flames kind of go with it. <laughs> I know it's kind of weird looking, right? But they but it works. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. All right, so it's pretty awesome how it works. Um, it's not gonna be as dynamic, so you can see the box when it falls over. Uh, the the flames kind of look a little bizarre. <laughs> They try to go straight up. They're they're trying to keep straight up with it. So it's doing as best it can it can with that. So I'm gonna close out. But that's okay, you know. Um, so once you do one, let me go ahead and show you the render of that. Um, what that looks like, so you guys get an idea. So we wanted to do a software render, okay? So under render, we want to make sure that is production quality and highest quality. And then um, everything else looks, let's do Gaussian filter, ray trace. Uh, mm, don't think we need that. Um, and then ray tracing is for shadows. And so um, 
Do I need a light in here? Probably need a light. So I'll put a quick light in here. Okay. Um, just so we can see the scene. And we'll rotate it so there we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and do a render. And the paint effects will be right, will render after the fact. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I like that. Alright, so now we gotta just do that to the rest of the boxes. So Again, we'll just select the box, do Control-1, and at this point, you will make sure you turn off the effect. So if you have the window open, which I don't have it anymore, you want to select the box. You want to make it paintable, and uh, make sure you have that selected. Just click on it again, and then click on the effect that you want to use. Go back to Fire select it and that will come up. Now you'll have to turn this kind of a glitch or a little bit of a bug where once you're done painting one box after you're completely finished you will shut that off. You'll turn that off. Make sure you're on frame one when you're painting the boxes as well. Okay, That's really important. So frame one that's important that you need to be on frame one when you're painting the boxes okay for it to work properly and then you guys can go ahead and just kind of mess around see if that looks good I'm gonna go control Z and I'm going to get a little closer to that box so I'm gonna do the same thing as I did last time just kinda of paint this um, all in one paintbrush just one stroke here there we go and get on the side and do the same thing for this over here. Okay, great. All right, so when you're done, hit the Q key to get out of the tool and then go control one. So now we got two boxes down and I think we've got the how everything works. Go ahead and close that and you go to the next box. All right, I'll come back when you're all finished and you'll see where I'm at. And then I'll show you how to turn the... Okay, usually I don't like to cut my videos because it kind of throws people, but um, I went ahead and finished everything. Um, I just didn't want to waste your time doing each box at a time. Um, I already showed you how to do two. So if you do have problems, make sure you're on frame one before you paint the boxes with the paint effects. So. Um, Anyway, so we're all set to go. The simulation now its going to run a little bit slower because of the paint effects. Don't let that freak you out. In fact, I have a pretty fast computer, so if you find yourself really slow because of the paint effects, I'll show you how to speed it up. Okay. Now, this is going to be a problem for some of you. Some of you guys are running on a very slow computer, maybe. I don't know. But the reason why I didn't do so many strokes, right? It's really important that you don't do too many strokes because um, you have to go through these and change the display quality. That's what's slowing you down. You got this display quality. so. Um, you might have to go pretty low. Some of you might have to go pretty low for that. So maybe something like 10 is fine with me. Okay, let's do that. And I'm just going to go through here and change that. So instead of wasting your time again, I'm going to cut away. So we're just doing the density of the fire to be or the d display quality to be 10 so that should speed us up so I'm gonna um, stop this for a second and come back when I'm done I've got to do that to all of them okay okay I just realized like a dummy that I realized I forgot that I have the attribute um, spreadsheet that I can go to instead of doing this one by one so I'm gonna click on this and 
uh, go all the way down to the bottom and highlight all of these in the outliner. That's Windows Outliner if you need to see your outliner. And then I'm going to go to Windows, General Editors. I keep forgetting about this uh, attribute spreadsheet, so my apologies. So hopefully me cutting and you watching a little bit more. So basically this shows, this will show 100% all the way across, but I've already changed all of them one by one by the time I got to the bottom. I was like, wait a minute, I have the attribute tr spreadsheet I can use. Anyway, so display percent under uh, shape keyable what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click on the top one and go all the way down holding your left mouse button and then at the bottom you just type in what you want so you do 10 and that will change them or I can go do the same thing again go to the top go all the way to the bottom and and bring it up to 100 if I wanted to and that will bring them back right back all together all the attributes at the same time so we want to make them lower so that it will render uh, faster or it'll play faster for us. All right, great. All right, so now we're back at 10 and let's take a look how f much faster it is. Play it and yes, it's way faster. It's almost playing in real time, I think. Frames per second. Great. And, and the cool thing is, let's go uh, move that outliner out of the way so you can see full screen. I want to make sure my view is correct. Yep. And then we'll go ahead and do, now that I got the lights in there, do a quick render. There we go. Okay. So now you can see the fire is working great. You don't, I, I don't need any renders. Maybe one render. If you could just give me one render of the fire. That'd be kind of fun. Okay. Otherwise, I can tell. If you go too low on the paint effects, if you go much lower, I won't be able to see them. So you'll have to keep it at least five or ten. You can't. Don't go much lower than that. You should still be okay um, at five. Uh, but if I can't see the f the these little hairy things coming out, then I'll probably have to count you off for not doing the fire. Okay. And I, I have to be able to see it go away, too, as well. All right, so with that said, let's continue then. What we want to do is we want to find out when the fire hits the boxes. So we want them on fire. So right about there, they should be going out. Okay. So at frame, oh, probably right when it gets hit, we start knocking them out. So right about there, should be putting out the fire around 60. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we want to open up the Windows Outliner again. I'm going to show you how to do one box, and I'm not doing them all because it takes too long. So we need to put a keyframe on this. So um, we're going to be looking at the shape flames. Okay. Sample density is important, so we want to go ahead and do a set of key. This will take a while, and go to frame 60, and you want to set a key, okay? And then let's say at frame 150, we want it, it to go out, okay? So we're going to type in zero, so right 150, and then we're going to go ahead and set the key. Okay. All right. So second, next box or the same box, but um, the second uh, stroke that we did, do the same thing. So we're, you know, basically going to go in here, go to the beginning, and we're going to set that uh, sample density. Set that, and we know to go to frame 60, and we set that keyframe, and then we want to go to and it doesn't have to be perfect but I go let's say to frame 120 I don't remember what the other one was let's take a look that yeah, was 150 so let's go back to 150 and click on this guy right here so 150 and we want the density to be uh, set at zero so it'll, it just go slowly down okay set a key so we did the one box okay all right so to 
finish this, then I'll go to uh, large fl frame flames one, and we're going to turn the global scale down. So we're going to go back to frame one. Okay. Again, I'm showing you how to do one box, and then you'll do the rest of them. And then, so that will be keyframe. So I'm going to right click over it and set key. And then I'm going to go to the next frame and right click over it and set a key. And then I'm going to go to the next one. You can see that I'm clicking on this. This basically tells me I'm going to step forward one key. There we go. And then we're going to turn that down to zero. Right, so that will stop the, the fire entirely. That box is now devoid of uh, flames. Okay? So let's play the animation. And you can see we got a little something there, but I think it's coming from the other box. But there you go. Now that box is totally out. Okay. So you'll do that for all these boxes. You go one to one and you just go down the list and doing all these and and I'm gonna cut and come back and I'll show you what I've what it looks like. Okay, we're back and that was not a whole lot of fun keyframing all those, but that's why we try to keep the flames to two per box and I did a little bit more than I should have but um, anyway it goes fast you know um, just take a little break here and there as you go along and pretty soon you'll be able to keyframe not only the uh, sample density you'll have to keyframe the large frames once you do the sample density at 160 and 150 or whatever you want to do uh, you're good to go but you gotta make sure that um, that you have this this setup too as well okay so again one frames 160 and 150 is what I ended up doing it worked for me so let's take a look and see what we have so far okay looks good I've only got one little thing going on here, but that was there before. Uh, but everything looks like it's been put out. So um, you're going to do a, again, um, when you do a, a um, play blast, make sure you save your work. Okay, I probably should do that. All right. Okay, so when you do your play blast, make sure you have XFID um, in your encoding, and it's free. So make sure you have that. If if you're using a a Mac, I have no idea what you would use. Maybe H.264 probably, AVI H.264 or movie file H.264. Okay, I don't have that in here, but I do have XFID uh, quality. We don't want to, well, we want to have the ornament showing, okay, so check mark these. Uh, frame padding, we have 400 f frames, so frame padding of 3 will work. Scale, you want to be 100. Quality, 100. From window, yes, from window. Um, save to file, yep. Where do you want to go with this? I'll probably want to put my get rid of this part and put my first name and last name in there. Okay. Browse, where do you want to put it? Probably your desktop and nope, don't want to do that. That was not what I wanted to do. thought I'd copied that but I didn't all right so all right let's just call that fire one and save that out and play blast so it should play blast and save the file at the same time but also open it up into the window when it's all finished 
Depending on how fast your computer is, it might take a little bit of time. Usually I cut during this kind of thing, but it's going pretty fast, so I'll just wait it out. Again, we want the fire to come off. I want to be able to see that fire. Okay. Used to be, um, I need to see that. And it's done. Okay, that looks good. Probably overkill, probably went too long on that, but that's okay. There we go. It's all done. Alright, so another thing, um, if you guys could give me just a render of the fire. Doesn't have to be super fancy or anything. There we go. And just save that. Save image. Color manage image, make sure that's selected. Apply and close and then go to file. Save image and you can save the image whatever you want to as a JPEG. Would be great. Don't don't give me some crazy alias pics or DDS, just a JPEG. That would be great. Put your first name and last name on there. And fire. Here we go. And we'll do a zero one. I can get that right. Here we go. Save it. Okay, getting some kind of a runtime error, but I'm not too worried about that. I just ignore that stuff. Save your work and you're done. Uh, turn it in. All the stuff that I need for deliverables. And um, have a good one. Have a great week. And that's it.